Hey everybody, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to interview round two with Ida Maria. Hi. Hey, good to see you. Great to see you. How are you doing over there? How are things going? Yeah, I'm doing all right actually. It's, um, I really crave hugs, you know, like I wish I could have some hugs. I know. Um, I haven't played a rock show in two years now. That's a new record. So um, I'm really craving like the rock and roll and the loudness and the people and all this stuff. But other than that, COVID has been really good for me. Like I took my license and I got sorted with my house and yeah, lots of good things. So. Well, I'm really glad to hear that you're doing all right. For me, it's more so been a lot of behind the scenes stuff, hosting tons of interviews. And just speaking to that, before the camera actually started rolling, we were saying how it's been about eight years since I first did a small email interview with you. And I remember you replying back and I freaked out. So <laughs> I was like, yes, oh my gosh, I get to interview her. So the fact we're doing this as face-to-face -face as we can right now, uh, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm really excited about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for supporting me for all this time, you know, and not giving up on me, like really, you know. Oh no, 100%. We're definitely going to get into some of the new stuff that you've been up to, but you're kind of mentioning the way the world is right now and things can get pretty boring if you don't keep yourself busy. So what would you say are some of the things you've been doing just to occupy your time and keep things pretty fresh and fun? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of things. I, I, I uh, learned to kayak last summer, so ocean awesome. kayaking. I took like a license for kayaking. I've been fixing up this house. It was a rotten old fisherman's house. It was like really <laughs> falling apart, and I decided to just redo it. You know, That's awesome. And yeah, just uh, I have a son, and I'm staying busy with him. I've been writing a lot of music, and just uh, started dabbling with jazz with some local uh, friends. You know, and yeah and now i'm releasing music you know again yes. so that's really exciting it's been a while we're getting really really close to the release of your new ep dirty money and i mean with all of the time and effort that goes into creating a release like this is the anticipation right now just kind of killing you like you must just want to get it out there <laughs> yeah i've been wanting to get this out for a long time and, and covid didn't really help with that like you know i couldn't go back to the studio and finish it where i was recording in los angeles and then COVID hit, like I was pushing my return to LA and then COVID just like locked that down. So, but I was able to finish the recording uh, from Norway and uh, mixed it remotely, you know, everything was remotely. And even now like the promotion and, you know, the interviews are done remotely. So it's the first time, you know, last time I was in New York. Right, and, it's so uh, different. Like, you know, tons of people and going a lot of places and stuff. And now I'm sitting in my living room, dealing with my reality here as a, as a mom. And then I'm being a rock star. And then, you know, <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite interesting because there's a lot of mixed roles going on. And uh, try to keep those two a uh, little bit separate, uh, you know, the mom and the, the rocker. <laughs> well, it seems like you're finding a nice balance. It does. Sometimes they get mixed up, <laughs> but not in a, in a bad way. <laughs> Right. Well, there's a song on the EP called I'm Busy, which I really, really like because it just tackles a lot of issues within the industry, especially being a female. And I remember getting into this business. I was 16 years old, very young, a woman, and I faced a lot of bullshit. So how was it for you taking on not only this really cool rap persona, but also uh, touching on some of the crap that you had to deal with? Yeah, you know, it's um, it's kind of a ha become a habit for me to change genders in songs or the gender roles around and see what happens like I think it's fun it's a fun thing that I like to do and this was one of those situations where I was like let's just write a rap song as if I am JC or like as if I am this biggest deal out there right but then it's like it's you're just like changing the roles you know like and uh but it was also it was also about um is a, you know, when people say, oh, I'm busy, you know, I'm so busy, yeah. you know, and it's like, you know, that they're just like turning down your lunch invitation. I mean, totally. it's not, you know, and they're not really that busy. So it's kind <laughs> of a way to say, like, I don't like you or, like, you know, I know what's like, going on. Like, <laughs> yeah, like polite uh, rejection. Right. And it's like, but it's also true, though, because everybody's so busy, so busy all the time. And like, why are we busy? What are we chasing? You know? 
And I, I would say that the follow up to this song, the next song that's coming out is Dirty Money. And Dirty Money is kind of like a follow up to the busyness, you know? It's like, where, so you're so busy, you make this dirty money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, what are you going to spend them on, you know? Coke and strippers, you know? <laughs> like, that's the world. No, but. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing I mean hey it's something we all think just not a lot of people are ballsy enough to kind of put it out there so kudos to you I feel like you always write what's on your mind and that's something yeah, you know it's very easy to relate to it works in songs but it doesn't work so good in real life you know not as much <laughs> that's my experience well, I remember the first time I heard your music and it was with Drive Away My Heart and I just thought oh my gosh your voice is so different and there's just that rasp and that range so when did you kind of realize that you had something different and you truly wanted to not just sing around the house and with your friends but actually pursue it because it is really unique I think I, like I was very shocked when I started writing songs I was just 14 I was just like dabbling with the guitar and figuring it out you know but very quickly, just from the start uh, of presenting my songs to people, the, the reaction was so crazy. Like I could see people start crying or they would just get obsessed and like, you know, harass me until I played the song again. And, and so this was like, this was a phenomenon that was outside of me somehow. Like I didn't really, understand what was going on it took me a long time to understand and, and re understand how I was going to handle it but I when I was 14 I made a decision that this is what I want to do like this is exciting like this is to be creative to music is the thing I love the most you know and and it seems like I'm good at it so I you know and I can't really picture myself in a nine-to-five job and I don't ever want to go back to school and you know, so I just was like, OK, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be an artist and nobody can stop me. I'm not going to have a plan B. I'm just going to I'm going to do everything that it takes to try and. and, and all to the wall, all in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I did. And and um, but it took me, like I said, it took me a long time to understand that in a way you could say, like, I have a gift, you know, uh, yeah. somehow and to learn to carry that gift uh, with grace, you know, because I was kind of just like releasing songs, playing shows, and then like running away from the fame because it scared the shit out of me, you know? Yeah. Like, so uh, and it took me a long time to process that. And, and, and I think after staying in LA for a few years and kind of meeting other people who were, who had some fame and some success, you know, and seeing that I'm, you know, that I could relate and then I could kind of return to Norway and tackle it in a different way because in Norway I've been a lot on TV, you know, and and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, just I was scared of of the fame, really it scared me. You no, know? It's, it's so interesting hearing you say that because when my website just started to get some traction, you know, you're not used to seeing people even wanting to wear your face on their t-shirts. And it's just all these random things that you have to process thinking, I'm just me, like what's, yeah. what's happening, what's going on. And it's, it's yeah. humbling and gratifying, but at the same time, it's, it's scary. Cause you realize, yeah. Oh, stuff's coming true. Like things are happening. <laughs> yeah, and, and your, your character has to grow with the phenomenon, you know? Yes. And also, you never get used to people approaching you on the street, uh, you know, uh, but I've, I've, I've learned a way of handling it. So, you know, because a lot of times people just want to let you know that they like your music and that it means a lot to them, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's a very, very nice thing. It's just that when there's like 20 people at the same time, that's like a little bit much. It's a lot. <laughs> or if they're drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah, that cool. throws a nice little spin in it. <laughs> yeah, on festivals and stuff, but no, but so I had to learn that, you know, their people's experience with my music is what they are referring to. They're not referring to their experience with me because they never met me before. Mm -hmm. You know, they met my music and that's what they are talking about. So they think they're talking about me, but I know that they're talking about my music. So that was good for me to differentiate those two things because I was like, well, you don't know whether or not I'm a good person in my personal yeah. life. You know? <laughs> so how can you love me so much, you know? Oh, definitely. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I... Maybe I'm not nice, you know? How can you love me? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I did want to bring something up because outside of music, you have something sweet in the works that you recently announced as you are going to be the hostess with the mostess at um, NRK's new music show. And I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but it's uh, Dynasty. Dyn- yeah, yeah, Dynasty. Yeah, that was like, yeah. Hey, okay. But yeah. that is such a cool opportunity. It's something so different. So how pumped are you for that? And just kind of tell us a little bit uh, about the show. Yeah, so so um, yeah, so I was scared of cameras. I was scared of anything TV related, and I had to do a lot of interviews early in my my uh, career, you know. And it was always so scary to me, like when the camera came, you know, and they started filming, and I was like, oh, "What am I gonna do now?" You know, I just want to run and hide. So I decided I'm gonna face this fear head on. I started doing like I started saying yes to all this silly you know reality like celebrity shows like I just was like okay I'm gonna test myself you know I'm just gonna learn this you know I'm gonna expose myself so I started doing that and uh, yeah I got into it you know as a creative field tv as a creative field and uh, and then they just started headhunting me for for you know doing these things like and and uh, I've done a lot of talent uh, scouting or like I've done a lot of helping young people uh, find their voices like on uh, just on a personal like volunteer basis because I really am so uh, excited about creativity it's like the most fantastic thing and a lot of people they grow up in homes where their parents maybe don't support them yeah. or you know so for me it's like a, a, a big um, it's a big case for me to like make sure that the young people who are trying out that they get some push forward and you know so I've done this a lot like in the in the behind the scenes you know so I really like just really I'm burning for young talent and young creatives and so this was like a, a really a fantastic opportunity to just like show new talent and and support them you know And uh, for me, it was like such a privilege to see 36 amazing performances live in the middle of lockdown. You know, like nobody got to see any concerts, nobody got to go anywhere, but we got to see these amazing performances up close, live in the middle of lockdown. (laughs) You know, I just really felt, felt privileged, you know. Well, congratulations on the opportunity. It's gonna be great to, to check out for sure. Yeah, and so I don't know if you can see it though over there because I think it's like locked to Norway. Well, maybe they'll like upload it or live stream. Who knows? But I'll keep an eye. Maybe I can, you can send you. I can send you an episode or something. Awesome. You won't. You won't understand the word. It's all in Norwegian. I have some studying to do. <laughs> but you will understand the music. Awesome. Well, the last thing I wanted to ask, it's a bit of a random question, but I know that these artists really hit home for you. So if you could have dinner with one of these icons, which would you love to hang with? Jack White, Billie Holiday, or Jimi Hendrix? Well, like, you know, okay, so Jimi Hendrix, he died very young. Uh, So if I was going to meet him in the time he was alive, I would have taken up his time to write more songs. I wouldn't want to like take up his time. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> you know, and I also know his brother. He's alive and he's a very sweet guy. So, no, uh, no Jim Hendrix, fantastic. Uh, uh, Billy Holiday, huge fan of her. I also just uh, feel like she was kind of enslaved in the music business. Like it was, she was a a black woman being kind of used by the music business. And (laughs) she was actually arrested on her deathbed, I think, for writing the Strange Fruit song. Oh, wow. People, people, it was forbidden to write about hanging, you know, or something. So the, the most amazing song of her career. So, you know, I think like meeting her as another white person in her life, I, I wouldn't, that wouldn't be, you know, pleasurable. <laughs> I just rest in peace, you know, and thank you for the music. Uh, so Jack White, he's still alive. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have a tragic story that I know of. <laughs> he has, he's, not, he's quite private with his personal life. Mm-hmm. He's, I'm a huge fan. I feel related to him in a strange way. Like I feel like we are some kind of brother and sister that never met, you know? Um, and I think we could make great music together. Like I think we would have a lot to talk about. 
I definitely know that I would be the starstruck one. Of, <laughs> he would be like, okay, another another fan, you know, another fan, you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've always wanted to meet him. I've always wanted to work with him. I'm a huge fan of everything he's done. I love his way of working. He's very inspiring to me, you know? So yeah, Jack White. Fingers crossed. You never know. The day could potentially come. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> right? Well, I really do want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time and hopping on here. It's been such a pleasure being able to catch up with you. And I'm really psyched for this entire release. So thank you. Thank you so much, Alicia, and good luck with everything, and I hope we talk again soon. Thank you so, so much. Hopefully next time it'll be in person, finally. <laughs> yeah. Good hug. Yes. Well, to everyone watching, be sure to check out aliciatoot.com, not only for our first interview, but plenty more exclusive interviews and features, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.